Hey guys, uh, we're going to learn the differences between cross flow and counter flow cooling towers. First, we have to understand what each, how each are designed um, and how to distinguish that. Your cross flow cooling tower, you have water being sprayed at the top. It falls down through a medium. You have air from outside. This is water spraying down through a medium, air from outside going across the water. That's why it's called cross flow. Water comes down, air goes across. And then your air comes up through a fan and out into the atmosphere. This is your cooling tower basin. Counterflow almost the same setup, slightly different. You have water being sprayed at the top of your cooling tower. You have your basin at your bottom. And you have openings on the side where air flows in. You can see here, this is, you would have your medium across the entire cooling tower. So your water comes in, it goes, um, settles on a medium and your air comes up through the cooling tower while your water is coming down. And there you would have a counter flow scenario instead of a cross flow um, as shown here in this diagram. And then your air goes out into the atmosphere. There is um, some design considerations. Counterflow, you'll have a smaller footprint, or you're able to have a smaller footprint, um, but these systems can be fairly tall. And your cross flow, you know, just the opposite. You'll have a larger footprint. but shorter, shorter height. Um, if we look on plan view, our cross flow, this is our fan. Um, so we're looking at the top. We'll have, this is where your air comes in. It crosses over, this is your medium. Right here is your medium as well. Your air flows through it. Um, you can see that your fan's on top, just like on both of these scenarios. However, you don't have any air required on these sides, so your clearances are constrained um, or could be constrained to the airflow sides only. You can line cooling towers up. You can have one here right next to each other. Um, these are fairly large, but the good thing about these cooling towers are your maintenance. You can have an access door uh, where somebody can go directly inside the cooling tower and access your fan motor um, to maintain it without having to, um, without any problems with the ongoing system. On your counter flow in plan view, you have your fan, so you can see it's a smaller footprint, but you have air that's required to come in all sides. So how would you access the fan and the fan motor without constructing the airflow. Well, how they would do that is they would actually provide a ladder on the outside of the cooling tower to go up to the top of the cooling tower. So you have a little guy on top. There's your little guy. And they'll do some maintenance 
on the fan from the top of the cooling tower. And so that, that could provide a danger to your maintenance guys. And so on top of these type of towers, we like to put a guardrail um, to protect the safety of the worker or some uh, tie-offs. Just being OSHA compliant with that. So those are your general differences between cross-flow and counter-flow. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, you'll see more of this type of content. And I appreciate you guys learning with me.